Hi folks, this is Darren here from the United Gaming Podcast. Just first of all, thank you very much for downloading this. Um, so do we appreciate the people who listen to our podcast um, every time we put one out. Uh, this is basically going to be an introduction to what was, without a doubt, the longest ever podcast that we have done. Because the fact is, I like we did like just all my mentions, you know, disappointing games and game of the year top 10 stuff um i expected this to go about two or three hours at most we went over five hours and that was in cl- and there was a break in between that five hours as well so we went very very long indeed and we never must expected it though but myself dennis and derek we had a lot to talk about so it did it seemed and therefore you what you're going to get is three three parts First two parts will be two hours long, um, and then the last last part will just be you know the remaining sort of you know remaining time left over an hour odd of um, the last part. So the first part will mostly consist of you know probably like our honorable mentions, maybe some of the disappointing. The second part will include the rest the end of the disappointing, and then like start for top ten stuff, and then the final part will include the rest of our top ten and are like sort of most anticipated games of 2014 and of course there's a few tangents in between as well so i hope you enjoy and this here and we'll see us all in the new year we'll see us all hopefully for the rest of the year 2014 we'll be back we'll we'll still be around we're not going to do them every you know week like we used to though but it's going to be like you know every month or so or however we feel like it but until then guys take care and hope you all have a great 2014 rock out Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of the United Kingdom podcast of 2014. So first of all, Happy New Year to everyone who is listening to us here. I hope you've had a sort of nice holiday and a Happy New Year. And it's been over a month since myself and Dennis have done a podcast. We said last time that we would do one around this time and we have kept our word. This is mostly going to be a sort of best of, sort of go through the, some of our like, favourite games of the year and um, some of our not so favourite like, slash disappointing games of the year as well. Because 2013 was a very interesting year indeed though. There's a lot, of, a lot of controversy, a lot of you know low points and high points though and we'll probably go through some of those as well over this, um, however long it's been over this podcast anyway. But anyway, of course I am one of your hosts, Darren. And with me again is coach Mr. Canadian, D-Boy, Dan, Dennis. Hello, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? Uh, Happy New Year to everybody, to to you guys, of course. And uh, everybody listen to the uh, the podcast. Hope you have a good one. Um, health, the most important thing, I guess, for, for everyone. And the rest will come afterwards. So we'll see what happens in 20, 2014. I was about to say 2013, but... 2014. I always do that myself, though, when I keep saying this year, even though it's like a few days in, it's like, oh, wait, it's 2013. <laughs> it's over with. I always do that yep. every single year. I always sort of muddle things up, and then I realize it's, oh, it's the year's over. Exactly. And, with, and also, we've got the um, Dark Souls master himself <laughs> with us now again, is um, 
dark. No, he's no longer the Minnesota Miracle Man. He's, yeah. no, he's the Dark Souls the master. Because yeah. I beat the four kings in one try. Yeah. <laughs> the first master. try. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll probably talk about that maybe later down the line when we go through some of the games we've been playing at the end of the podcast. Yeah, hello so everyone. Doing, doing, doing well. Uh, I'm glad thir- 2013 is over. I hope 2014 brings some uh, changes, you know, for the better to everybody. But uh, yeah, yeah, 2013 wasn't uh, the greatest of year for more than one reason. So I'm looking forward to a, a new start. Yeah. Um, I, I agree that 2013 wasn't necessarily the best of years for a lot of people though and um, it was a lot of games so very interesting games came out last year though um, indeed so they did mm. um, we'll, be go- we'll be going through um, some of our honourable mansions we won't be doing the whole sort of you know awards extravaganza that we did last year now because if we did that we'd probably be here for another three hours like we did last time yep. Ex- instead we're just going to go through some of our favorite games of this year, some of our most, some of our disappointing games, and we'll each talk about, go through round robin style, each of our top ten games of 2013. And I'm sure a few games will probably, will probably have, some of us will probably still have, all, we'll probably have a few games all in our top ten, maybe, and some games will all be in one of our top tens. And I know one of them is particularly is only gonna be in one of our top tens, which is a game that a lot of people liked. But we'll talk about that later on in the podcast now. So anyway, we'll get into the first part here, which is sort of a games that we quite liked. They came out in twenty thirteen, but just necessarily didn't make the <coughs> cut for our top ten games of the year. So Dennis uh, take it away. What was a game that you particularly enjoyed this from 2013, but you know didn't make the top ten? Um, yeah, well, there are a couple. I don't know if you want me to go through the list or just you know one at a time. Just go with one, though, okay. and then we'll you know sweat swing <coughs> things around. Then uh, we'll talk about there's it. one in particular I think uh, a couple of people haven't talked a whole lot about, and that I particularly enjoyed uh, this year is uh, Call of Juarez Gunslinger. That is also on my honorable mansions list. It's uh, so it is. It's a very good game for people who haven't played it. I, it's not that expensive. I I can't forget how much it was when it came out. I think fifteen bucks probably. I believe it was. Yeah, and it was a really great game. I really enjoyed that game. It's it's somewhat a little difficult, like a little hard, but it was a really good game. Really great game. Uh, the narration in that game is fantastic. Uh, and the whole shooting, the entire, uh, remind me, rem- reminded me a little bit of the, the club, a uh, little older game back in the day, and uh, 50 Cent Blood, Blood on the Sand, which uh, you, and he, you and me, uh, you and I rather, <laughs> you and me, yes, yeah. you and I rather played a whole lot of, so it reminded me a little bit of that, and it a really yeah, good game. we played through that game three or four times to get a full 1,000 points. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, this uh, this reminded me of that really good game, good little shooter, good little arcade type shooter, really enjoyable. And I think it wasn't on a whole lot of people's top ten lists, which I think is uh, it's not in mine, as you can see. But you know, came close, it came close to to breaking it. So yeah, I, I agree though. Like I played it, like I got when it came out. I got like for a bit of a discount before, and also got the. Um, Call of War is buying a blood free with it, so it did. And I tried it out, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's one of those games that a lot of people probably have forgotten about. Yeah. That came out last year. Yep. It's a shame because it's one of the better games. It didn't, as I said, it's not in my top ten though. But I thoroughly enjoy it. Just really great, you know, fast paced, you know, western action though, and like the high, whole, you know, high score thing, you know, shooting and getting the high score like in each of the, you know, yeah. levels. So, it's like you said, it's like that, you know, the club and. 50 said blood in the sand um, sort of you know method because they pretty much had the same thing you know going through each of the levels shooting getting like high scores and getting like you know these combos and all that things there and then also you can you know upgrade yourself with these different you know um, perks pretty much and if I you know and there's like these jewels as well yep pretty much pretty cool as well where you have to sort of you know try to aim and sort of quick on the draw and shoot your opponent down before you actually you know before he gets you though it's a really 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 enjoyable game though like 
It's it's Absolutely. definitely a vast improvement from their last Call of Warriors game, which I haven't played. I have it though. I got it for cheap, but I heard it's very bad, which was the cartel. Yeah, uh, I thought I think I got that one, but haven't played it. Haven't played it yet. So anyway, a really good game, re really enjoyable. Yeah, I loved agree. it a whole lot. So Derek, what is a game that you particularly liked from 2013? The that I that is not on my top ten, correct? Um, correct. I'm gonna have to say Gone Home. I know it's probably on a lot of people's top tens, but it's it didn't quite make mine. It's probably like eleven or so. Um, I really like the atmosphere of that game. Like it has like you know the dark and stormy night, and then you don't really know what's going on as you're digging through everything in the house. And you're you know reading little letters and notes and stuff, and you're trying to piece together what's going on and then as you're doing that you're piecing together the story which is like the main appeal of the game and the story is really well done you know it takes some twists like towards the end um, but I think uh, overall it was really really well done and a lot of people um, complain that it's not even a game or they complain about the twist at the end uh, I know that was it was mentioned on the Game of the Year podcast for Jam Bomb, Giant Bomb as well as other people just mm -hmm. bitching about tw on Twitter or in the comments on like uh, YouTube videos. I know it's actually <coughs> Adam Sessler. Adam Sessler's favorite game of 2013 is Gone Home. So yeah, yeah. I can. It's not mine, but I can definitely see why it would be somebody's favorite game of the year. So, mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed it. And I mean, I think everybody should play it. Um, the story is just fantastic. Um, and I, re I really like how. Like, the more you dig into stuff, like, the more story you pick up, you know? So I think there's some some stuff that if I didn't, you know, read this note here or figure this out, um, it would have changed my interpretation of, you know, like, what was going on. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, I can go into detail if you want, but I don't know if I should give any spoilers. Probably not. Mm, no, nah, it's not old enough, I think, for spoiler territory yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah... We we might go into many spoilers later on, perhaps. So we might just do spoiler warnings now, um, for uh, but not for now though, because like yeah, it's a we might go into spoiler territory for certain games later on though, but not for now. We'll talk about it later on. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, we will. <laughs> because I'm gonna say it now, and um, just it's in my top. Yeah, game. me too. So okay. because I absolutely loved it though, uh, so that is I just. Like I, like around the time it came out, everyone was talking about this game. I didn't necessarily get it when it came out though. I know Dennis did. Mm -hmm. I waited till it go went down in price and went fifty percent off on during a um, Steam sale. As much as I do love the game, I still it is a great experience. So I still think fifteen pound twenty dollars is a bit too pricey for that kind of game. Mm, well, it depends like, on uh, what you base your. I, I, yeah, but the thing is, though, I can say the same thing about Journey, and I absolutely loved that game as well, and it was only two hours, and this was the same thing, two hours, but the thing is, the more you explore and, like, look, search every nook and cranny, the more you're going to get, though, yeah. and it just brings this whole, you know, 90s nostalgia back, though, with all the, like, the old videotapes and recording episodes of the X-Files, you know, TV lessons in the paper, you know, fucking Super Nintendo there, and, like, you know, these fake game names, yeah. the fake game cartridges and things like that there but we'll talk about it later on though because as I said it's in my top 10 I absolutely, I absolutely loved it yep I paid 5 bucks for it <laughs> <laughs> it was in the it was in the humble humble bundle like they have a store separate from their yeah. humble bundles it was like 5 bucks one, for one week or something so I, I got it then yeah I watched definitely the, worth 5 bucks yeah. definitely worth 5 bucks <laughs> I watched a quick look and immediately got it for a full price on Steam. When I saw that quick look, I was like, yep, yeah, I'm going to play this. Played it. Yeah, I knew it. I wanted to play it, but I didn't want to pay 20 bucks for it. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted yeah. to play it. Yeah. It was seven forty nine when I got it, though. I was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay it now. Yeah. I wasn't disappointed. I, I'm saying, yeah, <clears> I'm fine. Going to shell out the money for it that. Was, it was worth the price that I paid for it, though, but again, so, yeah, mm -hmm. just don't know. Not sure, but like I said, I still think, like, that's probably... One, that's probably what some people are draw, pulled off, drawn off by the price of it. So, but yeah, whenever it goes on sale, if you ever think of, mm, I'm, not, I'm not sure of getting it though, wait till it goes down in price. I recommend you get it when it does because it's just a 
very unique experience. It's, it's a very narrative experience, so it's not one of those games you're gonna, you know, go around gun everyone. It's just like some people, like you said, don't deem it as a game per se. There's no gun and uh, no guns and no death in this game, so. Yeah. So, it's a th it's a thorough. Spoilers. It's a, it's a, well, yeah. Ah <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> It's a narrative experience through and through, though. Games like To the Moon and that there are so similar, though, where it's mainly about the story. So I thought it was going to be it. like Amnesia. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a horror thing when I started playing it. Yeah, and I didn't. I, I I thought about that until I found a certain thing in like the office. There was like a like an invoice from like a repairman. Then I was like, oh, okay, that explains all the stuff. Yeah, that's going on. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That was pretty cool. Right, yep, yeah, so Gone Home, an excellent game indeed. Not in Jarek's top 10, but will be in mine and Darren's, so that's basically a little spoiler. Yeah. For a little look ahead. All know. <laughs> um, a game that one of my games is, is, is going to be an honorable mention, it's in my top. It would have been. This would probably would have been in my top 10 if I actually give it more time. Uh, the main problem with this game is not anything to do with the the actual game itself, though. It's just it came out at the worst time for me, though, because it came out a few weeks before the pretty much everything came out. <laughs> um, Saints Row 4, Rayman Legends, Grand Theft Auto V, Wonderful 101. Like, loads of games came out a few weeks after this. And this is a long game. And that game is Tales of Zillia, which I know none of you have played and none of you don't care about. I played it. Oh, you've played, that's right, correct, yeah, I forgot about that. I put about 25 plus hours into it, though, but if I've played some more, like I've actually played more than half of the game and actually enjoyed it as, mu mu um, as much as I did during the, the, those opening hours and that there, I probably would have put it in my top 10, but just didn't quite make the cut because of that, though. Like, I like to play a good majority of the game before I determine whether or not I put it in my top 10 rather than say, oh, I just played 10 minutes of this game, it's going to be in my top 10, which I know some people, I think, do. Mm -hmm. um, like, I don't mind if you actually don't finish the game, but if you actually played the majority of the game and you know what it's all about and then put it in the top 10, I don't mind that. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's Tales of Zillia, it's Tales series, um, you know, Japanese anime characters. I'm not really going to say it about the story though because it's just one of those you know very convoluted stories you know what it's about just these magic magic powers you know this ma using this magic tech trying to bring war wage war it's your sort of typical Japanese RPG story then but I, I say I really enjoyed though because I really enjoyed the battle system in the Tales of Games and the characters in this one I found to be um um, and I liked I liked the characters in this game more than say the last Tales game that I actually gave time to, which was Tales of the Abyss, which I put ten hours into that game and I could not care less about those characters. Um, but Tales of Celia, I know there's a sequel that's coming out this year, but I want to finish this um, one first. But it's a very enjoyable game if you really like your you know action JRPGs with great battle system and that there and really nice music and very interesting sort of same anime graphics but that's one of my mentions so anyway Dennis on to an act, another mention of yours what is <coughs> on your list um yeah I'll uh go down the list here uh a game that almost almost cracked the top 10 until I finished it just a couple of days ago but <laughs> <laughs> it became just a frustrating experience for me but anyway uh the game is uh, Dead Rising 3, which uh, I got not too long ago because, you know, I got my system, my Xbox One at Christmas. Uh, went through the game, pretty much the entire game co-op with uh, James Logan and uh, Darren. Um, you know, the Grim Reaper and all that stuff, and uh, the Ultimate Grim Re Reaper, rather, which, you know, makes you level up really fast in the game, so... Uh, Enjoyed, you know, like the first couple of hours through it, but I guess in the chapters, I guess six to eight becomes like a frustrating, frustrating event. Like it becomes really frustrating at one point, like 
too many zombies around you and too many too many things going on and the final mission like the won't spoil anything but the mission on chapter 8 that you have to do is just you know just a frustrating you know go around here shoot things go around here shoot things go around here shoot things you know it's just i don't know i didn't i really hated despised the last mission so uh you should use yeah. the czar that's what i used the czar yeah that yeah. gun that's like a shotgun and a, uh, assault rifle combined yeah but i know there's still you know the shooting is not that bad because you know i equipped like a ton of lmgs so it's not really the thing it's just that you have to go to one site then you have to go to another site and then you have to go all the way to, across the other island that was pretty much yeah. the part yeah. of the game that was like i hear that i played it with dennis that co-op mission and that was part of the part i just i just hear those like okay you be here for a bit shoot a bunch of these um you know um drones okay a little bit of a spoiler there um, and then you have to like go. Oh, okay, they're gone now. Go travel, fucking like have to go all the way to the other island. And it's like, oh great, now I have to fucking try to get through these bloody massive zombies now and go with the vehicles which fucking blow up pretty easily because there's like 50 million zombies on screen mm -hmm. and just really a slog though. And luckily, it only took us two times though. Like we basically with the thing the beta the mar Raider filled first time though because we didn't realize what the mission was going to be and we didn't have any um, you know firearms with mm -hmm. us and therefore we fucked up sort of like the first part of it though and then by the time we nearly got it done it was like too late so we saw both uh, yeah. bo both endings I guess you can say <laughs> how both things happen you know yeah so. yeah but and then I mean besides that it's it's a really good game like I really enjoyed it like the first I would say halfway through and a little bit more than that it was really fun just you know killing zombies and going around and picking up blueprints and you know just level, leveling up like crazy and you know having fun but I guess the couple last couple of chapters become you know just a, a you know grudging it's, it's I don't know it's just a chore to go through them especially the last uh, the final mission so that's why it sadly dropped out of my top 10 it was it was there for a little while but Sadly, dropped out because of that mission. I really despise that final mission. So, and that's the I only. I played it as well, and it's also in my mansions here as well. Okay. You keep you keep giving me, you keep mentioning games. It's also in my <laughs> honorable mansions. Yeah, we could just might just talk about them now rather than like you know talk about them again later. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, like I got the Xbox One, and like the week after it came out, after saying oh, I wasn't going to get it though, but you know me, Mister mm. One Eighty, um, not just you. <laughs> When he asked yeah. the same thing. Everyone did. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone who says not going to get one. Yep. So it was a lot of, lot of 180s everywhere. Yep. I played for a bit when I get when I got it, when I got it though. I was like, yeah, this is fine. And then I sort of find out about the whole little ultimate Grim Reaper and kind of how you level up fast. And then I, I think the next time I actually did play was sort of a bit. And then like sort of played co-op with Dennis and pretty much played the second half of that game yep. co-op with him. I have to go, I pretty much you can say I quote unquote finished the game because I finished it with Dennis co-op but I haven't done chapters 2, 3 and 4 myself so once I don't finish them myself then I can say I finished the game. Mm -hmm. So I have. But yeah it's a very enjoyable game and um, sometimes it's a bit, the frame rate goes a bit dippy though but it's not to the point of oh my god this is totally unplayable. It just you know goes a bit now but it's not so bad because there's like the loads of zombies on the screen now like you can sometimes you can see like hundreds of zombies on screen mm -hmm. easily when you use, you use the ultimate grim reaper and there's a bunch of zombies the frame rate will drip will, dr will drop a little bit when you do that but besides that it's really really solid and I really enjoyed this one because it seems to be the most sort of streamlined accessible game because it's like auto saves um as well you can go like it sort of auto saves like check there's like these checkpoints and things like that as well and also um I don't know if it was in Dead Rising Two now. Did you play Dead Rising Two Dark? Yeah, I played all of them. Uh was there a chapter select in the second one? Uh I don't think so. Right. Because I know there wasn't one in the first one though, because the fact is if you died and something you have to pretty much start over again, I think yeah. and 
I think it was. Just I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was the same in Dead Rising 2. Because there were times when I would just start over because it would it wasn't too big of a deal and you'd keep your progress your like your level progress. Yeah, so this is more accessible to those ones because the fact is there is a chapter select now rather than say, oh, I fucked up here now and I have to start all well, over and, again. And there's autosave because you had to save at like the toilets before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which you but do have to do in like the nightmare nightmare mode in this game. Yeah. Which I don't think I'll touch. No, me neither. <laughs> no. I'll, I'll have my fill of the game with uh, just, you know, playing it on the story mode, which is like, you know, probably the easy way, but I had my, I, I enjoyed that game anyway with Dennis, and it's a lot of fun playing that game co-op, though I, I think it's probably mo more enjoyable to play co-op, in my honest opinion. Yep, I agree. So, Derek, next. Oh, let's see. Uh, I got three games left on my honorable mentions. I guess we'll go with Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Yeah, I have that one too. <laughs> uh, I love the look of that game. I love the music. I absolutely love the music. Like, oh, yeah. Probably more, th more than anything, I love the music in that, that, yep. uh, that game. Like all the Shall like neon, like <laughs> futuristic techno look to the game is really cool. Like all the different weapons and stuff are really fun to use. Um... You know, it's just like it's more Far Cry the ex Far Cry Three, except it's you know, like in the future, and it's got this goofy story that's like you know, like eighties action movies, like you know Terminator and it's Rambo 80s and stuff. Yeah, eighties future. Yeah, eighties future. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Because it's set in two thousand and seven, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Uh, it's how uh, we saw the future that, yeah. back then. It's funny. Yeah. And what's the, what's the guy who does the voice? He's the guy that played uh, Hicks and Aliens. Yeah. Who's like some of the voice acting isn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, I don't know, that's kind of like part of part of the charm. I think it's on uh, purpose <laughs> rather than yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really really enjoyed that game. Like that's that's one of the games where I would listen to the soundtrack outside of the game, you know, anytime. Yeah. For sure. It's a great so. soundtrack. Really good, great soundtrack, great setting. Great game. The story is just you know, all over the place, which is awesome, because that's exactly how 80s movies were like. <laughs> 80s futuristic action movies were like. They were just cheap. They were just, they were just dumb. Dumb and all over the place, and you know, just ridiculous. And that g this game, it was really great. I really enjoyed it too. Really awesome. I like the actually did a lot of kind of a more stealth in this game than in like the regular Far Cry 3, just because for whatever reason I found the bow to be. Yep. Yeah, me too. Better in this in this version than in the regular game. Mm -hmm. I so I, I did that quite quite often. You know, I'd start with stealth, and if I'd screw up, I'd just go in, you know, guns blazing, and finish off the rest of the guys and stuff. So yeah, yeah, it's fun to just go take over all like the outposts and whatnot. Just run around, cause mayhem. Yeah, really great game. game. Really great game. Again, that's not a game I didn't really put a whole lot of time into though, but for what I played of it though, I quite liked it. Like I said, I loved the look of that game as well. When I seen like the first trailer, I was like, yeah, this looks pretty cool. The whole sort of, you know, neon future set, you know, just really looks cool. And yeah. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed what I played of it though. And so to say, I think I probably, for the hours I played of this game, I probably enjoyed the actual Far Cry 3 itself, to be honest though. Um, since it's just sort of a bit more kind of confined in mm -hmm. a way because it's just so set number of things you can do here rather than like the various things you can do in Far Cry 3 though and but yeah I really enjoy, I really enjoyed the game what I played of it though but it's game not a game from last year I didn't really put enough time into you can finish it pretty quickly it's not a long game yeah mm -hmm. it's not a long game but again it's just one of those games that sort of played for a bit and then sort of put time and just got ignored mm -hmm. unfortunately yep so so anyway, so this is that. a game, so yeah, this is going to be a game that's um, a lot of people really loved, and it's going to be in a lot of people's top 10 lists, a lot of people's on the top of their top 10 list, and that is The Last of Us. Um, I have it in my honorable mentions also. <laughs> despite the fact you've only played it for a while. Yep. Several hours. Well, I played it for maybe five hours, four or five hours. Or something. Yeah. I didn't get this game until 
I was off last summer. Um, probably like um, I know it came out around pretty much E3 week, and this game got a lot of great reviews. It pretty much got it's critically acclaimed. A lot of people say this is the best game on the PS3, bar none, the best graphics and all out there. And while I think it is a great game, I don't think it is like this absolute masterpiece that some people think it is. But if they're they're entitled to their opinion, I really think this has a really very interesting narrative with the interactions between Joel and Ellie, and. It sort of starts off with a bang with the opening 10 to 15 minutes of that game as well because you know it's like there's a kind of oh shit moment in those op in that opening sequence and he's like oh this shit's for real and they, they went there and then you pretty much you know play as Joel for that game and then you pretty much go through each of the this, these different parts of the states over this sort of whole year these different seasons and you counter Ellie and she comes with you and you count these various different characters and you know fight these clickers and all them there and mm -hmm. it's a very good it was a, I, I really did enjoy the game though I pl probably put about maybe about 14 15 hours into it overall um I absolutely have to say it is one of the best looking games of 2013 that some of the scenery in this game is absolutely gorgeous though like probably my favorite part is probably when you get to the university it's just this barren wastelands it's deserted though and i absolutely love that part i just that was probably my favorite location in the game though but there's various different parts of this game that just absolutely look lovely though um it's that way that one of the best looking ps3 games if not the best looking ps3 game but it's naughty dog after all and they can do no wrong when it comes to you know graphics and cinematic experiences so because they did it with Uncharted and it done here again with Last of Us and um I really enjoyed the game. Like some parts of the game play weren't necessarily my cup of tea. There were certain parts of that game that quite annoyed me. But for the um experience overall I thoroughly enjoyed it though and it's a very good very good game. Like as uh, even though it's not in my top ten, I still recommend people go out and try it though because it's a very good game indeed. I Early Did you finish it? Was, it? Yeah, I finished it. Okay. I got to the end and seeing what happened there, and uh, don't spoil it. anything. I haven't. I watched. I watched that alternate ending also on online, which was interesting. I'm not gonna spoil it, Dennis. Don't worry. I know you haven't yeah. played it yet. I want to go back to that one. I haven't played it yet. Well, I haven't played through it yet. I should say. Just got frustrating for me at one point. I just said, well, fuck it. I have other things to play. <laughs> so. But yeah, I'll, I'll go back to it for sure. But yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's, a very good, it's a very good game. I really really did enjoy it though. But like, yeah. It's a great game. So Dennis. Next on your honorable mention. Okay. Um, since we talked a couple about a couple of my games here. Uh, I should... Uh, I think I'll go with um, another uh, PS3 exclusive uh, that came out this year that I I, I, I kind of enjoyed a whole lot. It's uh, Beyond Two Souls. Uh, really enjoyed uh, really enjoyed that game a whole lot. Uh, the ending is kind of kooky a little bit, a little, uh, all over the place and a little exaggerated at some points. It's it's one of the most divisive games of the year. Yeah. Especially in the review department, because it's one of those ones where a lot of people really enjoyed it. The sort of, um, you can't say quote unquote get it in a way, I guess. But there are other people say they absolutely think it's stupid crap as well. Yeah. While I do agree with some, there is certain parts of that game that are kind of, you know, a bit out there. It's like, okay, that's a bit OTT. Mm -hmm. I still enjoyed the experience myself yeah it's a really good it's a really good game there are some some moments in that game that are really that stand out a whole lot you know like the the party the when she's younger or you know other events during the the course of her life the homeless chapter the homeless the chapter, chapter yes absolutely absolutely that's a really awesome chapter um but some chapters are just like what the fuck, you know? It's, uh, 
It's more the later ones than the yeah. early ones, though. Like, there's one, I'm going to say the Nahavo one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting, though, but I think it goes on too long. Oh, yeah. That one's like an hour, I, I agree. think, at least. Yep. It goes on way too long. The entire army thing, I think, uh, could have been left out. Like, they could have just mentioned, hey, she went to, to the army and whatever. And, you know, just continued with other stuff, you know. Not go into the whole shooting from behind cover and stuff like that. I think it's it didn't belong in that game, honestly. It didn't belong there. So, but still, yeah, it's it's in my honorable mentions because it's a really good game. People should uh, give it a ch give it a shot. Uh, with the uh, the Last of Us, of course. Uh, that probably, yeah. game is like t less than twenty pound now. You can get it online places here, and I know a game came out in October. Yep. So that goes to show it that it probably sell like crap. It's yeah, like it probably crap. didn't sell very well. So, but yeah, I recommend it. It's a good game. Honorable mention on my part. You played and you played Heavy Rain, I didn't. Yep. You? Played Heavy Rain, finished it. I think Heavy Rain was better, in my opinion. But yeah, Beyond is still very good. Still very good. So. You didn't play it now, Dark, did you? Nope. I assume you have no interest in it either. Mm, I might rent it, but I'm definitely not gonna just up and buy it. Yeah, it's probably if you can if you can rent it yeah. though, it's probably worth getting a rent it though anyway. Yeah, I'd recommend save you, yeah. s save you some dollars anyway. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I, I could see why it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea though. It's just it's just one of those games that sort of splits the audience. One people really enjoy the experience, and other people say, "Oh, this is just fucking stupid." Um, I'm one of those ones who liked it, and again, and I'll we think for um, ahead, it's a it's in my top ten. Oh, it is okay. Yeah, because okay. I really, I really enjoyed though, and just the, the just the uh, um, options I chose and things like that. There, like, I know you went back and looked at all the various endings now. The thing is, I haven't. I just, I just want to keep. I just really want to see any of the other endings. I just sort of felt like my sort of playthrough of the game was just kind of, you know, the way I went through. Is like, ah, oh, this is fine. There's little bits though. It's like, oh, I wish I did this here though, but. At the end, I thought that the experience I have with that game was just like, yeah, I'm happy with the way I went through this, the choices I made and that there. I was like, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I didn't go back and, you know, switch things around now. But yeah, very good game and some great performances in that game. And on page, um, especially. Yep. So, Derek, another honorable mansion. Okay, I got two left. Um... State of Decay on Xbox yep. Live Arcade, PC, and I think it's on PSN, but I don't know for sure. Um, I bought it on Xbox Live Arcade like the week it came out, which was right around E3, I believe. And I really do like how, I mean, some people might just write it off as another another zombie game. And while it is zombie game, it's, it's really focused on survival. Um, kind of like uh, DayZ, I guess but it's not in first person. Um, and I think there's some roguelike elements, like if you... Because you can get more than one character in like your team, like in your crew of survivors, and if they die, then that, that's it. They're dead. You know, so it's a you don't, death then, yeah. Yep. Um, the, like, it's... Uh, it's kind of realistic in, in that all the guns like don't really do a whole lot of damage, and ammo is hard, hard to find, so you really focus on like melee abilities. Um, there's no like combo weapons like Dead Rising 3, but um, it does have some cool like wrestling moves you can do. You can do like suplexes on zombies and stuff, which is pretty fun. Yeah. Um, and you can there's a lot of like base building. Like you can build and upgrade different things like your watchtower, where you know like have somebody like sniping zombies and they kind of protect your your base. You have there's like a training area where you can increase your you know abilities for your whole crew. Um, and there's like a farm even, I didn't really get into that. Um, but I think, you know, you can use that to, to get food and whatnot. Um, yeah, and you can like get sick, so you have to get medicine. Um, you do like a lot of supply runs, you're going through all these like, you know, abandoned houses and, you know, businesses like, you know, fast food restaurants and like warehouses and stuff. And you're, you're getting materials, like either building materials or, you know, medicines. Like you get, you have a big like backpack full of stuff that you carry back to your, to your camp. Um, 
Mm-hmm. It's really fun just running around exploring and and there's various types of zombies. It isn't just like regular zombies. There's like these big, huge, fat, bloated ones that'll just rip you apart if you're not careful with those guys. Then there's like these screamers that'll attract other zombies near you. Like that, like it'll start a horde. So there's different hordes of zombies that you know they can just destroy you as well if you're not careful. Um, and there's cars you can drive around. You know you can run over zombies and stuff, but they don't usually last that long. Um, I really like that game. There's some jank to it, like it's a little janky. Some stuff, like kind of, there's some bugs in there. Um, like I had a guy, I sent one of my guys out to a certain area, like a, a outpost, to like get supplies or something, and then he somehow got stuck in the river and he couldn't get out. Even though I went there <laughs> myself to see what was going on, and he wouldn't like climb up the ladder to get out. So eventually, I just left him, and he ended up he ended up dying. So it's like okay, whatever. Um, then there's some other some other jank stuff, janky stuff like that. But um, it doesn't look you know especially fantastic or anything, but it looks fine. And what one thing I really wish that game had was co-op, like because that would be so much fun. Yep. They did promise the co-op though, but then I, they basically said they couldn't do it then or something. Like I that don't know. Things. I thought they were gonna do it on the PC, but then it doesn't sound like they're going yeah, to. Yeah, there's no co-op on PC either. Did, so unless did, did, unless somebody does a there mod. There was a statement I think on one of the Steam forums on that page that said first I'd forget that, but it just basically said there's not gonna be any multiplayer in this here for certain reasons. I don't know exactly hmm. why that. that, that, that yeah, it's too bad. That some statement, but yeah, because it does sound very interesting from yeah from what you said there about it though and. And that would have been pretty cool to play to get like sort of you know have four player co op and me you and dance can sort of just go around and sort of you know build up supplies and you know kill zombies. Mm-hmm. But shame. Yeah, it would be it would be really helpful, especially for um, some of those bigger zombies. Like there was a mission that I was trying to do over and over that I was failing, where you have to uh, you have to like hold off the zombies while this some guy at this farm like they're setting up like a like a radio antenna or something and you t- as soon as you take them out then there's like a one of these big huge fat ones that show up and they he just kills everybody he like he kills all the other npcs and then you know if you're not careful he'll just kill you and mm-hmm. i kept on i kept on dying at that part so i haven't uh gone back to it since then but um yeah it's a really good game um it was it was pretty close to being in my top 10 but uh but not quite no yeah. It's in my honorable mentions. Me too. Uh, same for me. I really, I, I haven't played a whole as much as I have, as you have, uh, Derek. But uh, I played, I played a good chunk of it. It's, as you said, janky. There's some stuff that, you know, is kind of weird. Like uh, some stuff will happen, and it's, you know, like uh, I got a guy that got stuck to somewhere in a barn uh, where you go to to a farm somewhere, and he got stuck in the barn and couldn't get out anymore. So. I don't mm-hmm. know how that happened, but uh, anyway, yeah, I, I, I didn't get as far as you did. I, I didn't play as much as you have, but yeah, it's it's a really good game. The the whole premise, the entire thing, it's really nice. You know, I, I, it's not streamlined a whole lot. Like some stuff is kind of complicated to to figure out, but uh, yeah, it's really good once you once you get to you know once you get to know everything and how it works and. Uh, where to go get stuff and all that. It's it's really great. I really enjoyed it too. So it's in my honorable mentions also. So cool. Yeah. Okay. And that's State of Decay. Yeah. I haven't played that game yet at all. I was thinking of getting it when it was on sale though, but this just didn't go with it though. But yeah, I might try it out though when it's on sale again because it sounds very interesting indeed. From what I've, from what it's I've seen it's worth getting, and there's a lot there's a lot of game there. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's definitely for fam the money value for your buck. Yep. yep. Um, another game. I have a bunch of them here, yep. so I probably have more on the mentions on you, than you guys. So, but I'll probably just go through. You can. I just have one more. Them. I have a couple. I'll just probably just go a few of them. You know, after mm. user guys are done. But I want to talk about one here now. Um, this was a game I was very much looking forward to last year. Um, pretty much because it was one of my favorite games of the the predecessor to it was one of my favorite games of 2013 and 2011 so it was uh, me and Dennis had an absolute blast with this game it was just a fantastic game just 
absolute chaos, hilarity, etc., mm-hmm. etc. Et I was Saints Row the third. But the follow up Saints Row 4, while it was still quite enjoyable in a lot of ways, it just, to me, it's not as good as the third. And there are some people out there who feel the same way, but there's other people who prefer this over the third. The, well, some of the reasons why I don't like this much as much as the third is I find most of the activities to be pretty lackluster. Like, there's some of them are still the same from the previous ones, and some of the ones they cleared for this one are pretty um, boring or annoying. Mm-hmm. I just didn't like the complete, total, sort of dusk um, state, state all the time, though, but once you get into that game in the daytime, it doesn't look that great at all. No. Hence the reason why it's probably the... Um, Always in dusk all the time, and I just some of the missions. Some of them are great. Some of the missions are very good, though. So from some of them are just very enjoyable to play, though. Uh, but I just didn't find like the story, I guess, or like I the the sin the sinyak. They find I find him bland as fuck. I didn't like him at all. I I couldn't care less about that antagonist, though, compared to Killbane and that there and. And the pre- the ones in the previous game, I just could not care about um, Sinyak at all, though. Um, but it does have it some does have some of its great, it does have some good points. So you know, like it basically probably makes a better Crackdown game than Crackdown. Yeah. With collecting the whole orbs and powering up your guy, and you have this whole superpower element, which is pretty cool, though. That's very enjoyable indeed. Makes the game very easy, though, once you get up to a certain point. Um. Vehicles in that game become pretty much obsolete once you get to a certain once you have the sprints and all those upgrades. You don't really need to use a car except for certain missions where you do. Mm-hmm. And when you do, it just feels like a slog then. But yeah, I really enjoyed though. Some of the characters are great though. Some of the like you know throwbacks to the previous games are great as well. And it's just sort of a kind of it, it's a great game though. Just I just enjoyed the third more though. So it did, but still a great game. Like, I really enjoyed the Saints Row series overall, apart from the first one. And Lord knows if they're going to do another one for next gen, for next gen or now this current gen. But let's see. I hope to do at least another one, though. Because um, the ending to that game, they can go on many different ways, that's for sure. Yep. Oh, there's going to be another one, that's for sure. <laughs> they're not going to stop there. And I haven't touched the DLC for the game either, so I don't know how they are. I heard they're actually pretty good. They're actually, well, they're a bit. Uh, I heard they're definitely an improvement over the ones in Saints Row the Third, oh, yeah. which I did not yep. touch at all because I heard very bad things about. Oh them. yeah, they're a lot better. DLC is much better. That's for sure. So they actually learned their lesson from the travesties from the previous game. Yeah. But yeah, I might try them out when they're on sale. I think they were all on sale during the the holiday sale, but just didn't get them. But I'll probably get them down the road when they're cheaper, because I like to try them out anyway. So anyway, Dennis, how many more? How Back to me again. <laughs> um, Back to you. <laughs> um, okay, uh, hold on here. Uh, yeah, a game that was pretty much ignored by everybody, and I think I'm the only one who played it, pretty much. Uh, is uh, the Bureau XCOM the Classified? Uh, I played that. I really, really enjoyed that game. Like I really liked that game. The whole setting, uh, the whole gameplay of it. Really, it's really great. It's really awesome. Uh, hold on, just gonna close the phone out here. Hold a second. All right, there we go. Okay, so yeah, the um, the whole setting is uh, is really awesome really enjoy it um it's more tactical it's more of um like a third person tactical shooter than it is a a uh you know like more uh, it's not like the enemy unknown yeah exactly there is some strategy to it uh it's not like you know proper it's like yeah turn bird more of a tactical shooter, third person shooter with sort of strategic elements, but it's not like a completely like the traditional XCOM games. Exactly, yeah. 
So it's more of a shooter than, uh, you know, you can just go in and start shooting enemies everywhere. But, uh, you know, you, you want to use a little bit of strategy and use your your guys. You have some 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 agents that you, you can bring with you. You can level up. And it's, it's a little bit like the other XCOM game for that. Um, you know, you can use different weapons. You have uh, early weapons are like just regular weapons like a shotgun or, you know, handgun or whatever. And then you get enemy uh, alien technology, and you start building the the more advanced gun guns, and it's it becomes really awesome. But yeah, I really really enjoyed that game. Like the whole look of it, the feel of it, really good. The story is pretty good. It's the very beginning of uh, XCOM, so it's uh, it shows you a little bit how it started, how everything started, and uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. I haven't seen it anywhere in anybody's top ten, but. Well, it's not in my top ten for sure, but it's a notable mission. Really enjoyed it. The thing about that game is it didn't really get great no. reviews, though, and also it came out at a bad time because it came out the same day as Splinter Shell Blacklist and That's Saints Row Four. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that was probably the one that got shoved to the side. Yep. So it was a damn shame, though, because it was actually originally supposed to be a first-person shooter, and it sort of rebranded then as a third. Because if you remember a few years back, they had this XCOM. It was just known as XCOM. Yeah, supposed to, yeah. That this basically was a first person shooter. Is that the one with like the black ooze or whatever? Yeah. In exactly. that trailer? Okay. Yep. Yeah, and then like it was sort of, you know, it pretty much went AWOL in a, a while. Just yeah. It was MAA for a while, and then it sort of got came back and rebranded as this sort of tackle third person shooter then. So it did, like, and it came out and. Got pretty much, I think, mixed reviews. I guess. Yeah, I got mixed reviews. Like people didn't particularly enjoy it. I mean, it's not the greatest game of all time. You know, it's not. Uh, some some levels become a little bit of a bore, like it becomes really repetitive towards the end. But like the first couple of missions, you know, you get you start leveling up your character and all that. It's really great, and I found the story to be really good too. So, if you're into the whole I bought it there on sale on um, Gamefly um, several weeks ago but I haven't tr like I played like five minutes off it though but then like turn it off because I was just too tired at that point but I was like yeah I'm gonna try I'm gonna try it out though because for, because I because I pretty much got it because you quite liked it though yeah. and sometimes we share our same interesting games and quite like some of the same games mm -hmm. so I checked it's it out it's pretty good it's re I recommend it it's great I really enjoyed it so check it out if you can <laughs> if you like alien uh, stuff Instead of zombies, <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, zombies, aliens is not as played out as zombies at this point. Yeah, it will probably be come to a point where it will be, but not at the moment. Exactly. So, Derek, this is your last one, isn't it? Yeah, it's my last for my honorable honorable mentions. Um, Animal Crossing: New Leaf for 3DS. This is like the, the only that... the only Animal Crossing game that I've really spent any time with. And I did enjoy it, even though it's there's not a whole lot to it as far as like quests or story or you know anything like that. You just go around and talk to your people in your town, and you fish and hunt for bugs, and you know you're upgrading your house and you're buying all these different Nintendo themed items to put your put in your house like you can get like the master sword you can get like you know samus's outfit for your character and you know coins and stuff from mario and mushrooms and whatnot and, and of course there's other like theme like i got uh i bought the throne it's not actually the game of thrones throne but it you know it kind of resembles that mm -hmm. it looks yeah so it's kind of fun to just do that for a while but eventually it does get do, you do get kind of tired of it um and they do have little events for different seasons, like I'm, which I didn't actually haven't even played, but I know they have like a Christmas thing, and there's like a New Year thing, and a Fourth of July thing, and like a Thanksgiving thing. You know, different uh, different holidays will be special events in the game and stuff. And um, like my wife likes it, but she hasn't really played a, a whole lot recently either. So um, I don't know I I really enjoyed it when when I was playing. I think it was probably because it was one of the few games I had on 3DS for a while there. Um, but I've gotten some other ones since then, so it's kind of gotten pushed to the wayside. But uh, it's a, it's a good game. It's probably the best Animal Crossing game. You know, there's like Street Pass stuff you can do, where you can. There's like this whole uh, 
area in the town, uh, like kind of behind the the shops where all the shops are. You can go and look at other people's houses that you street pass with, and you can also like purchase different things that are in their houses if you want to for yours. It's kind of like a mail order catalog thing that they have set up for that part of it. Um, oh, and you collect fossils too. Those are that's fun to do. Like, cause I like you know I think dinosaurs are cool, so it's fun like finishing you know a big skeleton you know, getting like the skull and the body and then like the legs and whatnot and the tail. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much not a whole lot different than the past Animal Crossings, but I think, you know, like with the Street Pass stuff, they definitely made some improvements there. And I think it looks probably, th probably the best out of all of them. And, uh, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. That it was the first one I got. I got like a few weeks after it came out as well. And I, had a bit of time into it, but I just realized this game's just not for me. It's 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 a game that's not for anyone. I I know people, I've known people who can spend endless hours in that game for. I don't know why though, but like I can see why people like the game though. But there's people that put hours and hours into that game though, and just just play it pretty much every day for a lock of minutes though, just sort of you know update their town and you know talk to their talk to the residents and you know collect you know all sorts of things to increase their collection and things like that but I played it for maybe an hour or two and I could, that's probably not enough though but I could say I, from there I could say this this is just not for me and I, I, I know I'm not going to like this game and I just traded in there a few weeks ago it's just it was my first Animal Crossing game as well but it's just yeah it's, it's not definitely not me, enough time to really to really yeah, get probably, into it but I could say, but from what people were saying, like, but what, what, like, cause when that game came out, pretty much that was all Twitter. The, all, all people talked about yeah. it for a few weeks <laughs> mm -hmm. on Twitter. And I just got pretty Got sucked into it? You're like, oh, I better try it out. Yeah, that was, I think that was the reason why as well. A lot of people were talking about it as well. I just sort of, sort of got sucked into it though, and then, you know, got it though, and was like, yeah, I played a bit of it, and I was like, yeah, nah, it's not for me. And, Probably the same way if I try something like Harvest Moon. If I tried it, I would probably be like, "Yep, this is probably be the same way as well," because they have similarities. Those games, so they do. They're not exactly the same game, but they they would have definitely some share some similarities. But nah, mm -hmm. and I lot of lot of people really like that. I know a lot of people have it in their top ten list though. But yeah, it's it's just it wasn't for me, to be honest. Unfortunately. Too bad, because I thought I would might have enjoyed it, but no, nah, just so we give it like a couple of hours. But yeah. Anyway, I have a few more here, but I'll just go. Um, you're done with your mentions. Um, how more have you got, Dennis? No, well, I've got maybe three or four more. Oh, okay. We'll probably just go. Th I'll probably just say um, go through one more each, and then we'll just sort of rav rattle off the rest. Mm -hmm. of them. Just to sort of games m move things swiftly along. Okay. Um, this again to go with another kind of. This is a game. This is actually was my most anticipated game at the end of last of the 2012. When I was coming into 2013, this was my most anticipated game of the year. And it goes to show what an interesting year has been when it actually hasn't made my top 10. And that is Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Now I'm a big fan of platinum games. Um, I absolutely love Platinum Games. Some of the games they've made, like Bayonetta is without a doubt one of my favourite games of this generation. I've played every single game of theirs and I put bar one on the DS but and I really enjoyed all of them, bar one, which I'll talk about in the disappointing games so well. Um but this this one I just really like Metal Gear Rise. It's just if you played Platinum games before, you know what you're getting here. Just sort of over the top action, just slice and dice through various these like you know soldiers or cyber soldiers etc. And the whole you know cutting system and it's pretty cool. The Sandatsu, you just cutting them into limbs and you know ripping their like in yards out and like powering your shelf up and some of these sort of over the top you know boss fights and that there and. It's a, it's just a fantastic it's a great game though. The probably one, the, one of the main reasons, probably the reason why it's not in my top ten is the last boss in that game got on my fucking nerves, <laughs> and it took me literally at probably three four hours to beat it though because I kept screwing up at certain points though and it just got to be a real bloody grind mm -hmm. and 
pissed me off to no end though and that's probably the, the, the biggest reason why it's not in my top 10 because that last boss kind of spoiled my enjoyment of the game a bit overall though but still a great game it's not a lot necessarily long game either it's only like five six hours long now so and it's actually coming on the pc next week so it is i just i just bought it from the microsoft store for 10 bucks oh <laughs> so I, I played the demo and i really liked it even though it's uh tricky to get into like with the the parry system especially yeah because there's no block button per se though it's like whole is you pretty much have to sort of try to master that whole parry system especially yeah. towards the later half of the game because certain <clears> enemies and there's certain bosses as well where you have to try to you know make sure you can ta um, time that parry perfectly now and you know slice and dice your way through the boss but it's, it's a very good game like some of the music in that game i really liked as well it's some songs in that game are great though like these cool little sort of you know rock slash metal songs like there's one song during the boss that i really enjoyed though and it's it's a fun, it's a very enjoyable game though. It takes place after Metal Gear Solid 4, and the course she stars Raiden, and everyone hated Raiden when Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, I think he got back some of the hate, got some love then in MGS4, and he's just sort of a cyber ninja, cyborg ninja badass in this game, and it's it's a, it's a s interesting story, um, um very. Very, yeah, very interesting story though. But it's it's a, it's a good game. Just not in my top ten though. It probably would have been if it didn't, that boss didn't piss me the fuck off so much. <laughs> but yeah, Metal Gear Rising Revenge. It's thoroughly recommend checking out if you like the action games. But yeah, it's a it's a great game. So anyway, then it's on to our last in depth one, and then we can I can just rattle off <coughs> some of the other ones I have on my list here before we okay. go on yeah. to the next. Um. Okay, let me choose. Let me choose a. Let me choose a good one. Uh, this one might possibly be in the whole. Maybe you guys' top ten. Uh, it was in a bunch of people's top ten. Sadly, didn't make my top ten. Uh, that game is Papers, Please. Uh, no, it's not my. Top no, 10. okay. It's honorable mention, though, but not my top ten. Yeah, Papers, Please. Um, came out uh, I think the demo came out last 2012 right at the end of 2012 or something like that probably would be though but I didn't hear about that game until early <clears throat> this year okay like I saw uh, Ryan Davis uh, play that game on uh, Giant Bomb I think it was on Professional Fridays he was was it not Drew mm -hmm. who played it no it was it was him at the very beginning who oh, played yeah. it and um I said, yeah, this game looks really good. I went and downloaded the demo for it. And I played through it, and I was like, man, this game is great. This is really awesome. And then I talked to Darren about it, I think, or tweeted or something like that. Yeah, we talked about it on, during an episode of the podcast. Mm -hmm. And you basically said you should play this game. I actually didn't play it until, like, maybe a few weeks later. And then I tried to demo myself. I was like, oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to get this. And then I basically... Get shared my love of the game, like the demo, after I played it through as well. I was like, oh man, I'm going to have to get this game when it comes yeah. out. And the, the entire game came out this year, was following Lucas Pope on Twitter, and uh, he mentioned it was coming out on Steam. It had been greenlit. And I downloaded the full version, of course, and absolutely loved that game. It's really awesome. It's uh, You start off, it's really easy, uh, going through the passports and all that, but it gets really complicated, and it's, you know, it's... Who would have thought that a game, you know, checking passports and letting people into the country would be, you know, filled with a, you know, pretty great story and interesting characters that come along and, you know, uh, at your booth and start, you know, telling you their, their little stories and what's going on with them and all that stuff. And, you know, taking care of your family, having enough money to, for food, heat, and uh, what's the other one? Food, heat, and health? Rent. Rent, rent, rent. yeah. So, you know, you need to have enough money for that and you have to go, you have to be quick so you can make more money. And, that, and you know, as you progress, you have a whole lot of stuff to check. So it's like, oh my God, this is, the, okay, did I check this? Did I check this? 
entry permits, work licenses, flipping their um, these medical stuff as well. Yeah. It's like it just gets more and more complicated as you progress. And then each time, I don't know if it did that for you guys, but each time I, I handed over all the papers, I was like, oh man, am I gonna get a citation? Am I gonna get a citation? I'm yeah. always like God as well. Like you, you always, you always think, oh, okay, oh fuck, oh fuck, I, I forgot to look at this here. Did I get it? And like sometimes you go like, Whew, yeah. Every time you didn't hear that, but when you hear that, it's like, oh yeah. crap. And when you, sometimes you're, I was like that, you're yeah. pretty sure you checked everything, and then you hand over and, and you're like, oh shit, I didn't check that thing. God damn it. And you know, it's, it's really great. I mean, caring about something so mundane, so, you know. Really? Yeah, who knew what well, a game that would be kind of just basically be about sort of mundane job, looking through passports and permitting them, um, you know, immigrants and that there into this, you know, fictional Eastern European company mm -hmm. uh, in a country in the 1980s, Artuska. Glory to Artuska! Yeah. And the music is just great. The whole, when it just the game loads up and the the title starts crawling up the, the screen, that's really awesome. Like every yeah. everything about that game is really great. It barely, barely didn't make it into my top ten, but it's because I think there's not enough game, even though though there's thirty days and you can go back and replay it and everything. I think there's just not enough game there for it to be something that I would put in my top ten. But I went back to it there recently though because I played a bit of. I actually haven't finished the game to be honest. So I got like one of the endings by doing something. Mm -hmm. Um, during one of the days, so but I did really I like I play it. I'm like so I think I'm halfway through. Like I'm day fifteen or day sixteen or okay. something, maybe a bit later. But yeah, I, like I say, I really enjoyed the game as well, though. But just didn't quite make the top ten. But like I said, when we, me and you did, when you played the um, demo though, and just sort of goes over and I played as well. Just like oh man, we can't wait for this game. It came out over the summer period. Yeah. Um. It's like came with like ten bucks. Like remember that whole thing as well. Like this little wee thing. Where you, it's like how much are you going to spend in this game? How much is going to be? And you give like the the money. Yeah. The wee little web page, and then you see it's like oh wait, it's only and it's like ten dollars. It's like, okay, that's good. Yeah. It's like yeah, I got it when it came out as well. Well worth ten dollars. It's really good. It's definitely worth it though, and it's a very small game in terms of how. Big oh yeah. It's, it's like I think it's like seventeen. Or twenty, like twenty odd. Or well, it looks pretty much like what sixteen yeah. bit, or maybe thirty two bit. It looks very, no, it looks very reminiscent of old, yeah, like Commodore sixty four games or something along mm -hmm. those lines. Just very old eighties or sort of early nineties games of that era. And you could definitely tell though. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great game though. Very good. It's a lot better than some of the triple A games that came out this year, like some of those ones with millions of dollars. Behind him, that's for damn sure. And I'm, I just want to touch upon something because Patrick Klepek put this as his game of the year, right? And as he was playing it on the, uh, when he was doing his top 10, he played it. And there was something that he didn't even know about the game. And apparently he played it in, until the end. Was it the endings? That, uh, you know, like little dots at the top of the screen? He didn't know those were the endings or something like that. Or there was something else he didn't even know about the game, and I was a that kind of struck me as being what you didn't know that, and it's your your game of the year. That's kind of weird. It's just, I can't remember what it was, but I know there's something that struck me when he did his top ten. I don't know what it was though. So. Yeah, I can't. Remember. I forget what it. I forget what I forget what it was as well. I watched all of them there, but I forget. But yeah, it's just really good game. Recommended. Really recommended. It's in a lot of people's top ten list for sure. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I can see why. It's a very good game. Just didn't, just didn't make it into my top ten, unfortunately. Yeah. Just didn't make, quite make the cut. But I played it for two hours just so I could have a opinion about it, and it's okay. But I don't think it's as great as everybody think it says it is. Okay. Especially after seeing so much footage, it's like okay, I've seen all this stuff. Yeah. I'm like okay, now I mean, I get, I get the. I don't have any problems with like identif you know, the actual gameplay part of it. Um, like one of the arguments that people have for being the game of the year is the whole like, oh, you got to save your family, you know, you got to worry about food and health and all that. And like, I could care less, you know. It's, it's not. All love, like, yeah, the whole. There no, there's no saying. names to the people. They're they're just yeah. You just fictional, you know, imaginative. They don't even 
they don't even really exist in the game. It's just like numbers you have to. I agree with that. Out. Like yeah. I, I could care less about that. I agree with that. Um, and people, and also like, it's like, oh, you're gonna deny this person going into the country because their, you know, their wife, like, you know, you let the husband in who's fine, and then the wife, like, oh, look, something doesn't match. Are you gonna let her in and be nice, or you're not gonna let her in? And you know. Like they're trying to make it like an emotional thing, and I just don't get that at all. Like I don't feel that. It's like mm -hmm. I'm just gonna deny her because that's the game, and it's the job that you are given. Yeah, yeah, I'm not that way as well. I I'm could not, care less. I'm like a, I'm cold. I'm a I'm a heartless boss. Yeah, I agree. I agree like with you. If you get your papers right, job. then you know, fuck off. I agree with problem. what you're. I'm just doing my job. I absolutely agree with what you're saying. And one of the endings that you can come across is that you can just leave your family there and just go somewhere where everybody's free and you have food and you have everything and just leave your family there and go. So it's like, okay, well, I'm taking care of these guys the entire game and you want me to just leave them there and go. It's kind of... And I, I agree with you. I didn't feel the attachment to the family as, uh, you know, they watch you to feel the attachment. Like, it's just mom, dad, mm -hmm. and what is, what is it? Mom... Uh, son, it's like mom's son, uncle, or son, un un mother in law, something yeah. along those lines. So it's like, okay, well, it's just a name. I don't really, I don't see the person's face. I don't really care about him. You know, it's like the only person that got some sympathy or whatever from me is that guy that keeps coming back with the face fake passports. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was great. He's the he's the, like for one I played. He's the best character in the yeah. game. When I played played through this like the second time because I played through like three times, and he brings his fake passport. I just approved it, <laughs> let him in, and said, "Okay, go." <laughs> <laughs> and you got a got a citation, probably. Yeah, I got a citation, but whatever. I think he gave me forty bucks or something. So, like, hey, go in, whatever. Give me money, I'll be fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's a really good game. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it a whole lot. I hope that he he makes a sequel. Like, he's probably gonna get a whole lot of money from this game, and he hope I hope he makes a sequel that's a little bit more, a little bit more with a little bit more substance in it, like a little bit more stuff that makes you actually care about the family and care about your job that you're doing and everything. If you want to be an asshole or if you want to be. Oh, some people do. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like Patrick seems to really care. Oh well, <laughs> yeah, know? Patrick's Patrick. Like that was his. That's one of his big. Uh, points about you know the strength of the one strength of the game is is that aspect of it like the yeah. whole emotional attachment to your family and like whether or not you're going to let this person in the country i didn't feel that a whole lot no no I'm, I'm the same way though i know probably some people did though but i didn't like i say every time like when someone said oh please let me in because i ha i'm sick and i've no medicine here i need medicine or whatever and i was like yep you don't have the right you don't have the right to um, info in your passport. Your is there a mismatch here? Your passport's expired. Whatever. Sorry, denied. Yeah, exactly. Or if somebody would say, "Hey, uh, if you let me in, I'm gonna come back and give you money." And I'd say, "Okay, go in." <laughs> and he came back and gave me like forty, sixty dollars. Okay, perfect. No problem with that. Go in. <laughs> as long as you give me. Then the game money. punishes you because then the yeah. you're in trouble for it. Yeah, some like, didn't even have bother. passports or whatever. So, yeah. Well, yeah, pretty good game. So we just go down the list now, Darren, or what do you do? Yeah, I have a few more on my list here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm just gonna go through them. Um, you probably might not this. You probably might not agree with this here, but I actually quite enjoyed this game. Uh, Dead Space Three. Yeah, it was alright. Like I like I actually didn't finish Dead Space Two to be honest though. I got halfway through the game and I just I don't know. I just didn't go around and finish it though. And I finished Dead Space 3, and it's I got it's another EA franchise which have pretty much done the same thing. I finished the first Crisis and the third Crisis, but not the second. <laughs> same way here. Second is the best one. The, <laughs> for, yeah. uh, Both franchise. <laughs> Both franchise. Yeah, and finished the third. Yeah. Um, no, I I I think the first. I haven't finished the second one, but I got like halfway through the game. But yeah, I still think the first one's the best in that game. I know people prefer the second. I agree, but I think the second is a great game too. Yeah. yeah, I have to go back and fin play it though. And Dead Space Three, I quite enjoyed though. Like probably the opening half of that game is probably the best. When you're going around the ships, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. There's certain parts down in the um, that 
was it Talfaladis, I think it's called, the ice planet, is pretty interesting now, but it just becomes really a bit of a, you know, shooter. Yeah. And there's certain parts of the certain parts that got quite annoying though, but there's certain parts, it's... It's pretty much, it's probably the easiest of the game because of the whole universal ammo and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I I do like the whole um oh fuck it's salvaging for and you know creating your own weapons and that. Yeah, there. that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool, but yeah, it's 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 a, it's a good game. Like I I enjoyed playing it though. Like I got it for I haven't played you know, it. I got it for free though for some reason. Was it in the humble bundle maybe? Could have been, yeah. I think that's what it was. It could have been, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it was. But you have to use Origin or whatever. And like, I don't even have that installed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was an uh, humble bundle, the EA one, but I got it like later on. That's like it was on I mean, I think, sale. I think some people got it for free because of the whole SimCity debacle. Probably, yeah. No, I don't think it was. I on thought it was sale. one of those games where they gave was they it? gave a game for free because of the SimCity thing. I think that was one of them. Could have been. Well, in any know. case, in any case, it could have been. Yeah, I got it for like 10 quid or something, and I enjoyed it though. I got the DLC there, which um, I haven't tried yet though. I got it for half price when it was on sale there over the... Um, it was on sale at half price on Origin there a few weeks, uh, like a month or so ago. But yeah, good game. Mm-hmm. Guacamelee on the PS3 and PS Vita um, is a great little kind of Metroidvania game. And it's a cool little art style to it, um, this sort of whole... Mexican motif, sort of how little wee references to other games and really cool little wee fighting system though and just uh, like I really enjoy Metroidvania games though and this is definitely not a one like fairly recommend getting this game and you can get it on PC now it's on Steam as well and I got I got on the PS3 um cross by um so I didn't play I played probably most of it on the Vita though but it's a great game. Um, Grand Theft Auto Five. Um, I think this game is a lot better than four. No, a lot better than four. Um, I think the missions are better. I like the world. The story is is is, is interesting at first, but it goes absolutely nowhere. I could not care about most of those most of the characters in that game. Mm-hmm. And I think the ending is. Is just useless. I just didn't really enjoy the ending whatsoever, though. Um, but it does have better missions, Mission Freddy, than you know, Four did though. But still, don't think it's as good as the PS2 games. Like I still think, uh, I think still think San Andreas and Vice City are better than that game. I probably put it third in the open world GTA games. Like I think it's better than three. But it's definitely not good as face. It's definitely not as enjoyable for me as San Andreas and Vice City. I still think they're better than it. Um, Evil Land. I know you played this game, yeah. Dennis. I, I quite enjoyed it as well. Yeah. I played it, but I didn't finish it. Oh, you played it as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nice little wee kind of retrospective to old sort of games, going through the different areas of like sort of RPGs, action RPGs, and the like, and adventure action adventure games. It's a cool little wee game, though. I played through it, though. It's not a long game. It's probably, like, several hours. I enjoyed it. Um, AVGN Adventures. It's a game starring the vi- angry video game nerd. Pretty much goes through. It's pretty much done in sort of classic 8-bit, though. It's kind of... It pl- plays pretty much a lot like Mega Man. And it's a pretty pretty tricky game. But I finished it, though. Even though there's certain parts of that game that are mad hard. But I I played play through it and finished it though. It's a, it's a it's a great game. Um, Harmon Harmonite, not our game. Came on the 3DS eShop. It's a very sort of rhythm platformer. Um, done by the um, game freak who did the Pokemon series. It's pretty much the first game I think they've done. Um, other than the Pokemon series. Um, so they did. Um, and finally. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Oh, is that in your top ten? I was mm-hmm. contempl- It was very close. as between this and another game. That was going to be in my top ten. Just didn't quite make the cut. Okay. I still think it's a great game. And thoroughly, you should definitely play it. It's a very good game. But just didn't quite make the cut, unfortunately. I was contemplating between it and what is in my number ten. Which I'll get to later okay. on. Okay. 
and I have a few other games here, but I think that's probably all I can talk about. Uh, mention here now. Okay. Should I go with the uh, the rest of mine? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, where's my list? Okay. Um, going down. Cook serve delicious. I know it came out last year, uh, but it was green lit this year for uh, Steam. It was available to purchase. It's a really good. Uh, like Diner Dash type game where you, you know. it doesn't matter anyway. That's about like if it came out earlier because people have certain games on their list that came out, a, uh, came out in a certain platform this year. Okay. They came out last year. Like few editors on Gamespot gave Spelunky their favorite game of the year, even though that ga game came out last mm -hmm. year. Well, yeah. So Cook Serve Delicious, really good uh, Diner Dash type game. You know, create meals and uh, you know have to serve them as fast as you can. Create the meals as fast as you can gets pretty hectic um i got to a three-star restaurant and it was getting really 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 complicated so uh but it's really a great game i suggest uh you check it out it hasn't gone on sale at all on uh steam during the the holiday sales or whatever i think it was on sale was it? Yeah. i think so yeah I was gonna buy it for somebody for, for Christmas, like, but I didn't. I think it was all on sale for like two pound or something. I fucking was gonna get. I think it was like a flash sale or something. Okay. Yeah, it was a flash sale. Well, for two. It's like, oh, for that not. price, I suggest you. Uh, I fucking missed it. You could have checked it out. It might be in the like the humble bundle store. They have probably there. Yeah, probably there. But yeah, check. Uh, should give it a try. And they uh, they honored uh, Ryan Davis with his own hamburger in the game, which is pretty cool. The Ryan Davis, which you you can create. So um yeah it's a uh, I, you know it's a really good game a diner dash type game uh Rogue Legacy which uh I played uh, a pretty good part of it really good game I'm not the type of guy who's going to play these types of games but um this one caught my eye because you know the diversity of uh of the guys you can you know send in there the players you know the type of uh, knights some are faster some have uh you know, better strength or whatever, and you know all the descendants of your knights that go in and try to push ahead in the castle and all that. Really good, um, really great game. Uh, I don't know. I I, I think that game's. I good, played it for five I, minutes and I said, "Nope." Really? Not for me. Yeah, it's just. Yep. I don't know. I have to try it again. I probably will. Something might click for me. I tried that game. I I sort of restarted like twice, and I was like. Or like once or twice, and it's like, oh, I don't know. I tr I got a good bit, and it's like, oh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. It's just something, but I that game just didn't click with me. And I I am surprised. I'm surprised myself because it's like a metro. It's kind of like a rogue. Yeah. Kind of like met rogue like metroidvania game yeah. kind of. And I'm surprised that I don't like I don't like that game as much as I thought it would. That's why it's called the uh, Rogue Legacy. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, I enjoyed it. I played. I didn't play a whole lot of it, but I enjoyed uh, the the parts that I played of it. Uh, the Wolf Among Us, uh, another Telltale game. Uh, very good. Uh, very very good game. You guys didn't play that, right? I got it for free. I haven't got it yet. I actually I have. I got it. I got it for the six pounds sixty nine. Anyway. I got it for free. The first episode free on Xbox Live Arcade. And then uh, it was on sale, thirty three percent off for the rest of the season at six point six pound sixty nine. Okay. And I was like, Yep, I got it. Okay. And the fact of the matter is it's been over two months now and that second episode still isn't out. Okay. Did you play it, Derek? No, I haven't played it. No. Well I, I suggest you guys try it out. It's pretty good. I will try it out when I'm off. I'll try it I'm off now for two weeks and I'll try it now. Yeah, it's really good. It's not that long. I think it's pretty you know, it's a walking dead type length of uh, of an episode but it's really good it looks fantastic the game looks really good the th characters are awesome the thing yeah, the thing is though I don't really want to count that as a 23 even if that first episode count I, I'm when I I'm just I would count yeah, that as a 2014, 2014 release game. oh okay because well. that's when the whole season comes out in my honest opinion you know most of it comes out in this year yeah okay yeah like back to the future the first episode of it came out in twenty December twenty ten, and the rest of them came out in twenty eleven. And that's the reason why it was in my top ten of twenty eleven. Okay. Well, yeah, so, it will probably come back next year. Who knows? Because yeah. who knows? It could be shit after. Yeah, episode, it could be. Know. It could be. That yeah. could be. I doubt it from Telltale, but you know, you never know. 
could be. Yeah. Uh, and I guess. And if he's played, it's the sidetrack. And if he's played the first episode, yeah, of season nope. two. No. No, neither of they. No, I'm gonna. I'm. I think I'm waiting until I. I'm. I'm probably gonna wait until an hour episode comes out. Yeah, I'll probably it because. Okay. Yeah. Telltale's just not great with their timing. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're just not like there's two over two months. I think it's like two months now since the Wolf Among Us and they haven't said anything about when that's coming out. Yeah, but they usually go, "Hey, here's a trailer for a second episode," and it comes out like the week after or something. So they yeah. usually do that. And it's, it does not matter that they have like four fucking things this year. Four. Yeah. Whole lot of stuff going. Yeah, that's crazy. They're busy. They're gonna be busy fucking bees this yep. year. So yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed the first episodes. I I hope it's as good in uh, the the rest of the episodes uh, coming up. And I guess the last one I'll mention is the Stanley Parable, which uh, I actually got when it was launched, and I really enjoyed really enjoyed playing through it. Like I played through it maybe five times, and got different endings each and every time, or different stuff that would happen during the the course of my gameplay that I didn't see the other times that I played it. Really, really, really fun. The the, the narrator is awesome in that game. So, uh, you should really check it out. It's a really good game. Yeah, I played it there last week. Um, so I did. And, well, early this week. And, yeah, really liked it. I quite liked it. It's quite, f- quite a funny game. Certain points of that game are kind of, you know, quite humorous. Like, entering the broom covered and staying there for like five minutes. With them getting really annoyed with you. Yeah, exactly. Is definitely a highlight. Yeah, the the narrator is a big highlight in that game. Huge highlight. I think the fact I think I think the fact that he's British as well just makes it better. In my opinion, is like the just his ac- the accent just makes it yeah. more. Ba- just makes it better. I have not played that game. You haven't played that? It was. I think it's nope. worth checking it out. Just Mainly because it hasn't been lower than. Or hasn't been like five bucks. Cause that's my yeah. target price. Five bucks. Yeah, I got one's on sale. I, I just got one's on sale. There, and it's like, yeah, I'll get it now. I'll try it out. Yeah, I liked it. It's it's a, it's it's definitely it's definitely it's definitely worth checking out anyway. But it's like it's a, you can you can probably finish that game in like a matter of moments if you just go through like the standard way, the not the start narrated way. But there's like these various different ways you can get like so there is you just go through these different ways and experience these different sort of you know scenarios and endings and that there like the was it the confused ending is it or something i think so yeah i think it is i think that's one's great and how she finds shows you the the whole thing what you have to do i was like really i have to do all that i'm not gonna do that <laughs> yeah it's it's a it's a very interesting game i know a lot, a lot of people really like i think it's pretty much on everyone's was i think it was on everyone's jam bomb top 10 list or most of them anyway I know a lot of people really like that game. Yeah, I think so. I think it was. So that's it. That's my honorable mentions. So yeah, that's honorable mentions list here. I think we're probably like, what, an hour into this or something? An hour and a half. An hour and a half, actually. Jeez, didn't expect us to go this long. And the next part, um, I don't really have a whole lot for this next part anyway, though. So I will so we'll probably just go through these maybe a bit quickly as well, is the sort of disappointing uh, or slash bad games that you played in 2013 now. And I will go first. This is a game that I was pretty much looking forward to. So it was. Um, I'm a big fan of the series. It's the fourth in the series on the DS, in the 3DS it came out on. That is Mario and Luigi Dream Team. I love the first three games in the se- in the series on the GBA and DS. I pretty much played all of them and finished th- them all. They're great little RPGs, so they are. This one, on the other hand, it's not necessarily a bad game. I just found it to be pretty disappointing. One of the big reasons why is towards the end of this game, this game really drags it just tends to be extended for the sake of it though where you have to go through these fetch quests where you have to get these five this different parts of this thing to make this bed then you have to go to this other area to activate this other thing and then you have to go in this other area to activate this thing and i just say geez it just seemed to be going on forever 
and it's like the final dungeon as well in the game just tended to drag on as well for um too long and that was mainly the main reason why I just found it to be disappointing. Just really dragged and again I could have it's I think it's like forty hours I uh, but I spent with it though, that could have easily been twenty five, thirty hours if they just cut the fat. So then I was really disappointed with that game at the end of the day. Um so like the gameplay is still enjoyable, like the story, the char some of the characters are not as memorable as the ones in the previous games and the humor's not as not as good though, but still it's still it's still a good game though, but just I just find it quite disappointing. It's like a lot of people still actually like this one. I, I think this is I, I think this is the worst of the four. So anyway, Dennis game you do you find disappointing from 2013. Uh, um, I don't have a whole lot, but uh, uh, I have one in particular that I kind of, I can't say I was really looking forward to it. I just had to try it for myself to see how bad it was, <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna say so. So I, you know, I played this pretty much at the very beginning of the year, or when I started streaming. I think it's one of the first games I, I streamed. Uh, co-op with uh, a friend, uh, Aliens Colonial Marines, <laughs> which is uh, absolute shit. It's really garbage of a game. Uh, Did everyone play it now? Did you d play it, Dark? Yep, rented it and played it all the way through on 360. That's right. I think yeah, I think you're the first one actually played yeah. it off the of three of us. Yeah, I rented it like like the week it came out or the week after or something. Like the AI is really horrible. Uh, I played it co-op a little bit, but you know you still have AI people following you around, and they were just brain dead. It's just amazingly brain dead. It's just funny to watch, and I don't know. It's just some glitches everywhere. Game looks really, really bad. Even on PC, it looks horrible. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a really bland, boring shooter. So it's a really bad game. I really did not enjoy this game a whole lot. Never finished it, but you know. Yeah, I got it. I rented it as well, I think. Uh, from Love Film, I played through it as well, and it's like, yep. Yeah. I don't think it's an absolute abomination, though, but it's it's pretty boring shooter, though. There's certain like certain points of it are pretty, like, the whole stealth part, actually, quite like. It was probably the yeah, most yeah, that was a good part, game. yeah. That one but I like. All in all, it's just like your typical, generic, shoot it stuff. Shoot mm -hmm. it. Exactly. It was pretty. Uh, I didn't really, didn't really enjoy it. Didn't finish it. Anything. It's just boring. Yeah, it's just boring. It's just, just bore fest from beginning to end. It's not the worst game I played of last year. There's one. There's one of worst I played though. Even if it was all of 45 minutes, but still. Yeah, there. I played enough of it to know that it was fucking hard. There's one other that was even, I think, even worse than this one, but uh, that I played all the way through. But yeah, this one was pretty bad. So, on to Derek. So, Derek. I just have two. Go ahead. Uh, Forza 5. Mm. Uh, yes, on Xbox One. Away. Yep. Um, I, wa I wasn't sure if I was going to buy it when I got my system, but uh, I kind of wanted more, you know, more than one game besides Dead Rising 3. And I have enjoyed the, the the past Forza games, although I did not play Forza 4. Uh, I played 1, 2, and 3, and then Horizon. Um, I played 2, 3, and Horizon. I haven't played Touched 4 myself. Mm -hmm. It looks great, and the cars handle very well. Um, that's probably, those are like the best parts of the game. You know, like the racing and everything, like all the, the core of the game, which is like the way it looks and the, the way the cars look, mm -hmm. and the racing part of it. That's great. But everything else is just really disappointing um the car selection i think is pretty poor there's a lot of cars that are missing and a lot of them are dlc like so there's some cars you want to use but it's dlc and you have to pay either you know 10 bucks to buy like 10 cars or you pay like 50 bucks to get whatever that gets you probably i guess probably all of it that's out now but it's really disappointing that uh they don't have a lot more cars in there and that so many of them are dlc um the whole like free to play crap that they have in there, the microtransactions, like I it hasn't really affected me much, um, especially now that they've changed it. They change they patch the economy so you get a lot more money mm -hmm. when you win races and the cost of the cars goes way down. 
Um, and if you have played past Forza games, there's like a Forza Rewards thing. Um, and you gain levels in that. And like once you get to a certain level, that you get rewarded. So I got, I think I'm level four or five in that because I've played, you know, a lot of the, the past Forza games. And I got four million credits for that. So I have like basically enough money to buy like, you know, a ton of different cars. Um, at first I didn't because I think some of the cars were like six million, which is crazy. But now I think the most is like 1.2 or maybe 1.6 million. So I could get, you know, whatever car I wanted, um, which okay. is nice. Oh, another thing is like when th with the DLC cars, like if you buy, even if you do buy a TL DLC cars, you still have to buy, buy them in the game with credits as well as paying, you know, real money for the DLC cars. Which I actually did because I had money in my account. I was like, you know what? I don't really plan on buying anything else right now. And I really want that damn Pontiac Trans Am that looks like Kit from Knight Rider. So yeah. I'm buying that fucking car. Yeah. So I paid 10 bucks and I got, you know, like 10 DLC cars from it. Mm -hmm. um, and you still have to use credits, which kind of sucked. But they, now it, I think it's better because they're a lot cheaper. So it's not like a big deal. But at first, you know, I was playing it the first week and... Mm -hmm. when I got that so um, and I think the music is terrible the music is absolutely terrible it's all like this intense like you know pounding music like oh my god are you going to win the race oh it's like you know it's not like a licensed soundtrack it's all instrumental like classical kind of stuff where you know yeah. they're trying to build it's kind of tension stuff you say in certain movie, like you know kind of car chase movies yeah or like, or like action movies. movies yeah it's just so dumb and it's like I just turned it off after like about three or four races. Mm -hmm. um, and the worst part is like if you wanna if you wanna put on your own music using like the Xbox music, for one that's not free. Oh. And two, the only way to do it is if you have it snapped. So like you have to have like that one right side of the screen where you can have your like, you know, you can have more than one app open. So then it reduces like the game screen by like thirty percent or something. Mm -hmm. It really sucks. It's like I don't want to play like that, so I have to like you know use some other source that's outside of the Xbox to play the music. And I really don't understand why they can't just have it like the 360 version where you just have your custom soundtrack, you hit you know play, and then it just like plays in the background. You don't need to have a a separate screen for it. It's just really disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, everything about the Xbox One's so, somewhat worse than the 360. I like think a bunch of stuff is, yeah. Out there as well, yeah. Like, what the fuck? I think the Connect is like the best, the biggest improvement for sure. Like the voice commands actually really work really well for me. They do. I know a lot of people still have issues with them, but uh, I do like the voice commands and it works pretty well. Um, and I was gonna say the the track selection is pretty poor. Like there's not enough tracks in there. I think like, it's you, like fourteen or something. If you keep playing, like you know, the more you play, like the more often you're going to play the same track and then it just gets boring after a while. Um, especially if you're playing on tracks you don't like, like period, like you just, it's, you know, it's a difficult track. I don't like this one. So that's, that's a big problem for me. Like that's kind of what's keeping me away from playing it more. It's just tracks. Like I don't really want to race on most of these tracks, you know, mm -hmm. like I really only like Road Atlanta and Laguna Seca and that's probably about it. Mainly because I'm familiar with those tracks because I've played them on past like Gran Turismo or Forza games so yeah no music thing is just annoying too because I like to, when I'm when I play racing games I like to have my own music or if the game in-game music is good mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll listen to that but uh, oh and the drive guitar that's all it really is is let's all smash into each other you know every especially the first turn but you know, ev pretty much every turn, let's just smash into each other. It's just crazy. I'm, I, 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 I pretty much just play that way. I just basically, I'm just dirty. I just, I'm not a clean guy when it comes to like I, uh, I'm not, but I, you kind of have to in order to win in this game. Like it forces you to, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's just so. It's just disappointing. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, it. so that game yeah, I, I, overall is disappointing. It's not like a terrible game. But I think it could have been a lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've played a bunch of it as well, like a bunch of races, and yeah, it's and like I, like yeah, the gameplay and all out there is like you know good and all, but yeah, I like I I haven't really played a, played a whole like I played two for a bit, though I mostly played that game online, so mm -hmm. I did, and 
I Dirt came out later that year a bit, and I pretty much played the hell out of it, and I preferred it over Forza. <coughs> played a good chunk of three, didn't touch four. Played a good chunk of Horizon, even though it's completely different, and loved that game. But yeah, this one it does look gorgeous. It does very look very look nice. It does look very nice yeah. though, like the whole cars and the tracks. It looks very looks really nice though. But yeah. I know people really didn't think much of this one. It's just like less car selection, less tracks than the previous game. <coughs> the whole microtransaction system kind of has irritated a few people as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's it's definitely I definitely can see why people have been disappointed since this game. Since the series overall has been very consistent, it's been very good and um, consistently overall. Yeah. It's never been sort of a bad entry in the series until now, I guess. So uh, yeah, anyway, another one, I'm just basically going to say, the probably the worst game I played last year now, and I played it all the 45 minutes, but like, that's pretty much enough to know that the game absolutely sucked balls, and that is The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. <laughs> I rented the game out, I got it, I just wanted to see how bad it was, because I like to try it sometimes to see, let's see how bad this game is. I got it on the PS3, I think. God for love film, I think I, I put it in, played it for about 40, 45 minutes, and I was like, yep, I'm not playing this game again. This game fucking sucks. Gameplay is boring, the gra it looks boring as hell, just really, just everything about it is just so dull and bland. There's just nothing fun about it, mm -hmm. though. Like, you can pick a bunch of people and give them certain w weapons at the start. You can go around, salvage, and um, you know, salvage stuff and that there, and things like that. It's like, yeah, it seems a bit, it could be a bit interesting, though, but, man, it's just really boring to play, though. Like, I enjoyed playing Ian's Cold Marines more than this, so and that's saying something. Hmm. It's just goes to show how bad this game is. Do not play this game <laughs> whatsoever. Don't even get it if you get it for fact. Like I like, um, I think it was a month or so after it came out when I was off for my birthday week. I seen a guy buy it in the game store, and I should have went up to sit and said, "Man, don't buy that game. Hmm. It sucks." But it no. don't. I was like, "Yep, yeah. it's your money." You let him drown in his own. It's 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 your it's your it's, it's, it's your money you're wasting, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Exactly. That game is forty pound full price. Well, but the thing as well about it though is terminal reality. The the co the copy that I um, developed it though pretty much were shoved under the bus because they only had eight months to make this game as well. Mhm. Mm so it was kind of like they were just basically shoved under the bus. They were just basically be put in front of the bus by Activision. It's like, yep, yeah, make this game, do it by this time. Okay, go. And they're no longer out now. now. So there you go. Hmm. Their last two games are this and the like, the Connect Star Wars game. Not a good way to go. No. They did that Ghostbusters game a few years back as Ghostbusters well. Ghostbusters game is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was. But <laughs> their lasting legacy is the, the Connect Star Wars, which I heard is I never played it, but you can. I'm Ham Solo dancing. That's all you need to say say, say about yeah. that game. It was bad. This game here is absolutely that awful, was bad. and you could see it online. You can get it for like a couple of pound eh, now, so 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 cheap, mm -hmm. crap game. So anyway, Dennis. Uh, well, I guess the worst game that I played this year. It's it's actually a game that I I really wanted to play. At one point, I was like, man, I need to play this game. It's during the summer. I was like, okay, well. I was waiting for a sale, waiting for a sale, and then it went on sale, I think, half price. And then I said, yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm going to buy it and play it. And, you know, I was looking at reviews and just stuff like that. Is this a game, uh, if this is what I'm thinking, say, is it, if this is what I believe you're going to say, then I think this game came out last year. I mean, 2012. Well, I played it this year. You told me we could talk about it. Well, go ahead. I'll, okay, go ahead. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I just, I just, yeah. Anyway, um, the, I played it this year. It's Star Trek, which. Oh right, no, I thought I thought of something different. Okay. <laughs> no, it's uh, Star Trek, which I was actually looking forward to playing, and then uh, played uh, from beginning to end. 
this very, very horrible goddamn game, which was really, really bad. The AI is horrible. Uh, there was one point in the game where uh, I was playing as Spock, and um, you know, you you play. It's always you're always with Kirk, so it's always two people together. And I w we were going through uh, four photon torpedo tubes, so you, you need to go while the photon photon to torpedo is not launching. So you you know you need to go, and then you know you you hide while it's launching. And I restarted that thing about 15 times, maybe. Because the brain dead AI would just walk in front of the torpedo and boom, get killed. And then I had to restart. And then, you know, the first five times, it's really funny seeing him just walk in front of the thing and get killed, you know. But then uh, the other ten times, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, you know, come on, just hide. And you can't give it, give him commands or whatever, you know, follow me or stay there or whatever. So he would, I would just, you know, I'd walk for ahead and avoid the torpedo and he'd just walk in front of the torpedo and poof, get killed and game over, restart the, the checkpoint and I was like, Jesus. I mean, it's really brain dead AI. Uh, gameplay is pretty boring. The story is not that great. Um, it's really disappointing. I really, really disliked this game. I really wanted to love, I, I wanted it to be good, but I kind of, kind of was thinking it would be bad. It was even worse than I thought it would be, so yeah, it's a really, really bad game. I rented it as well and played a bit of it on the PS3 and I was like, yeah, this is not that great, it's pretty crap. And I think you I think you were around the time afterwards would say you wanted me to get it though when it was on sale or something so we can play co op together. Yeah. And I think you got it for like fifteen dollars, wasn't it? Yeah, half price, yeah. Yeah, it was nine pound ninety nine and I think like a sev a couple of weeks later it was it was it went even cheaper than that. Yeah, then. I was like, and you must have been like, oh. Crap. Yeah, I think I went down like to five bucks or something at one point. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, I got robbed. <laughs> Clearly robbed. Even five bucks is too, too expensive for this game. Honestly, <laughs> it's really bad. That bad? It's eh? really bad. It's a really bad game. Yeah, I played about about I played about an hour or two of it as well, and yeah, it's it's. It's, a, it's very, very generic. Just yeah, very generic. generic shooter, and you know, every uh, everybody voices his character in the game, but it's like y you see mainly Spock and and Kirk, and you know, this, the voice acting is not that great. It's really not that great. The graphics are horrible. Yeah, they're probably just like reading off a script or something yeah. with no life. Phoning it in and everything. So, yeah, bad game. I really don't recommend you play it. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's a it's a it's a pretty lousy game. It is. Uh, what is your other disappointing oh, slash? Oh, here game? we go. <laughs> you ready to uh, ready for me to be controversial and piss a lot of people off? <laughs> We're ready. Go, go ahead. ahead. Grand Theft Auto Five. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm the only one who has it in his top ten, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't gonna buy this at first after the disappointing disappointment of GTA four. But they sold me on the I think it was like the second trailer. Was it the was it the online trailer, I think? That's probably what it was. They sold me on that and you know, ended up buying it. Um Yeah, uh, the only thing I really like about that game is the heists. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't like much of anything else. Uh, the online, especially, is just terrible. It's just run around, do like practically nothing, and then you get killed when you're trying to actually do something. And it's just like death matches or races. That's like pretty much all that there is in there. I imagine they've probably. It sounds like they've patched some stuff in there and they added some stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, I only played it like the fir within the first two weeks that, that it came out, and it was just you know. They did not sell me on the online stuff that they did in that trailer mm -hmm. with the actual the actual game. Like I didn't have any interest in going golfing or anything like that. Even though I don't even know if you could even do that in the beginning portion of the online. Like you no. might have to level up or something. Yeah, you need to level up. So, yeah, and and the way you level up, I had no interest in playing like death matches or races or mm -hmm. you know whatever. Like the only thing I could I would do is like rob rob convenience stores because you know. 
that's something that you can actually do without getting killed right away. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't like the story. I think the story in GTA 4 is a lot better. The story really didn't really go anywhere in 5, especially with some characters like uh, Franklin, who did basically nothing. He was just kind of like... To me, he felt like he was the player. Like, you were him, and the other guys were the main story. You know, Michael and Trevor were like the story, mm-hmm. really. That's pretty much my thoughts exactly. Like, Franklin seemed to be interesting at first, but then his story just went absolutely nowhere, and then he came back towards the end of the ge- towards the end of it then, then again. But that was it. It was like the Michael and Trevor show. And a lot of people say, oh, I love Trevor. Oh, Trevor's so great. I fucking couldn't stand Trevor t- at, towards the, at the end of it. Couldn't stand mm-hmm. him. I feel the same way about, um, oh shit, what the hell's his name? Lamar? Yeah. I despise him. <laughs> like, I just, if I could kill him, I would. Like, if it was, like, a Skyrim or something where you could just kill anybody, I would kill him. Mm-hmm. He's so fucking annoying. Um, yeah, Trevor, like, I think he was interesting. I didn't really mind him as much, though. There were some times where he's just kind of a little, a little too crazy, but, um... Yeah, I'd, uh, I, I think the the story between Michael and Trevor was, was pretty interesting, but it wasn't that great uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, I didn't like the music at all. Like, there's only a couple songs in the whole soundtrack that I like. Most of it is rap or country or punk or, like, Mexican music, <laughs> whatever, you, I don't even want to call it, with, like, whatever kind of guitars they used there. Like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it looks really good. I think the frame rate could be better. But that said, I don't really, I didn't really enjoy all the driving around as much because it took so damn long. Like especially coming off of Saints Row Four, it's just like I just want to jump, jump and fly to go where I need to go. Yeah, that was the thing as well. Like a lot of people shared that sentiment. It's like, oh man, now I have to drive to fucking up to Blaine County now from the city. Like, it's it took forever. Regrets. Yeah. Yeah, anytime you had to go up north to, like, you know, the mountains or desert or whatever, yeah, that just took so damn long. I agree. I, I think I do like the world, though, but I, I think I do agree. It is a bit too big. It is too big. Like, I, I, like I think... Maybe if there's fast travel, it wouldn't be so bad. There is fast travel. Well, basically, there is. Get a taxi. Yeah. Oh, well, that you have to find it first. That's the problem, and then yeah. it costs money. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much that's the, pretty much the fast travel in that game. Just get a taxi... And then call the taxi, and then you take me here. Um, I don't like the dialogue in the game. It's either fuck this or fuck that or nigga this, nigga that. And I just, I just had enough of that. You know. Every second after word that came, out, came out of Lamar's was pretty much on Franklin's mouth. Was that? It got to a point where I just stopped listening. I just didn't even care. I just drove, and I just didn't even pay attention to what they were saying, because that I just hated it that much. Uh, I could just, I mean, I don't have a problem with, like, you know, swear words and stuff, but, because I use swear words, but every other word, and it's just so annoying. And they're, and they're yelling, too, like, half the time. It's like, you know, like, oh, it just it just got old, you know. Um, but the, that said, the heists are really cool. I really, really like the heists. I wish there were, like, I wish there you could do that in online or, like, a co-op version of that, because that would be really fun. Um, though I didn't like how some of the heists you didn't get any money for them at all. How the missions in that game you don't get any money for them, which sucked. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when you, you, when you actually get money is like the very end of the game, and then I was like, I don't want to play anymore. I'm done. So. Mhm. I think I pretty much covered everything about that, but <laughs> yeah. I was really disappointed. I, I I agree with you in, in certain points there. Anyway, I definitely agree with you. But the driving and is I better could... than four. That's for sure. The driving is better. And I do like the customize. The, you, know, you can customize your cars and stuff. I like that. But uh, I think four did a, the story a lot better. Like there was some emotion with the characters that I had in four that I didn't have at all in, in five. Like especially at the end of four. But then like the dating stuff and like the going out with your friends like that was just so annoying too. So. So yeah, that's uh, those are my two disappointing games of 2013. Yeah. That's all I have, really. I mean, like, <laughs> I, I played Aliens Colonial, Colonial Marines, but I wasn't really expecting a whole lot from that, or I didn't really know what to expect, so I wouldn't really say I was disappointed, but it was it's just a boring game. Like, it's, well, it looks, you know, kind of bad, and it 
controls, I don't know, I guess the controls okay, but uh, it was just boring. Like, there wasn't really anything too exciting about it. Yeah, this is why I have a disappointing or bad games pretty much anyway, like, um, combination of the two. Or mm -hmm. so. so, yeah, but yeah, Grand Theft Auto Five, yeah, is a pretty... That's, <laughs> that's what I got. That's the first... I I yeah I could say I'm pi I was pi disappointed with it as well because after like the f the sort of gameplay trailers and out there I I was like okay GTA you got me again I wasn't looking forward to this as much as previous ones uh, but yeah you got me you got me better hook again because I was really looking forward to four it was out on my birthday in 2008 it was my most anticipated game of that year and mm -hmm. I it was I ended up being my most disappointing game of the year. Because the missions were fucking boring. It was just the same. Go like there is some of that in five though, but the five them for um there's a bit more Friday to other ones as well. But most of the missions in four are like go here, shoot these guys. Go here, shoot these guys. That was pretty much the consistency of those missions and, and of those in that game. There, the side activities were no good. I didn't really like the city. Like the city looked nice and all that there, but I didn't really enjoy driving around it as much as I did in like Vice City or you know San Andreas. And um, the story, yeah, like some of the characters were great in that game. The story was pretty interesting overall, but I just didn't really, didn't really hook me a whole lot though. But I can see why people like it though. But yeah, but five they improved in certain aspects though. But I still, like I said earlier, I still think. Still enjoyed San Andreas and <coughs> Vice City more. They're they're my two favorite GTA games, so they are those two. And I think Dennis will probably be the same way, would you? Yeah, mean? yeah, of course. Yeah, those are my two favorites. But my opinion is not the same, and you'll see later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't going to be in my top ten anyway after finishing because yep, yeah, I enjoyed this game. I think it's better than four, but still certain parts of it. The talk stations in this game are probably the worst in the series, cause they're the they're they're just they're dull. I probably mm -hmm. listened to maybe two or three stations overall, and just that's really yeah, it couldn't really be barred with the like I don't really like rap or R and B and any of that stuff at all, so I wasn't gonna listen to any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just got to a okay. point where I turned the radio off all the time, and I hated it mm -hmm. when like it was all it was on automatically when I would get in the car. It's like, oh my god, I have to turn it off now. <laughs> like, I didn't even really like the, the talk radio stuff. Like, the humor yeah. that they were trying to get, like, the humor, like, it didn't, not, nothing was funny to me. No. Like, it felt like Definitely. it, it felt like it was from a game from, like, I don't know, five, ten years ago. Yeah. Like, you know, the, hum uh, the humor, the humor aspect. Would, if it came out five, ten years ago, it probably would have worked, though, but not in this thing. And something like that, some of the dialogue as well, just, just so... Just basically making fun of whole American culture as well. It's like yeah. Okay, this okay, rock star. You're. It's like okay, just, we get it. We get it. Okay, you're just doing the same thing you've done in previous games. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think 11. that's getting old. Also, it's yeah. getting old on their part. I can go back and listen to Chatterbox from GTA Three and still enjoy some of that stuff. And that game's fucking twelve years old. Mm -hmm. But no, I just really didn't like the, didn't like the radio stations in this here, and just didn't like some of the songs are great now, but I didn't like the talk radio stations. But yeah, GTA 5 disappointing for Derek. I'm sure that is. I'm sure some people feel the same way as yourself though. Like I still, I I still probably find it disappointing as well. Like I thought it was gonna be great, like very brilliant, but I just think it's good. Yeah, well, there's some people that think it's the game of the year, for it. so that's, I mean, that's yeah. fine, I'm glad they enjoyed it, I just, I didn't. I'm listening to a podcast, though, they've done five, they're doing five parts, uh, the, all the five parts are up. Is it um, like the Giant Bomb stuff? Like, the, the liberating for Game of the Year stuff? It's um, Game of the Generation. Oh, okay. It's this British one, so they are, and they've gone through, like, they've, they've made this list up of, these, of so many games, so... And there's a bunch of them, like four of them there, and they'll go through each game and sort of determine whether or not it's going to be in this sort of short list of games of the generation. Like the first three parts consist of that. Which which generation? Like the 360, PS3? Yeah, and Wii, yeah. Okay. The, like this generation. Even though there's the, still games coming out for it's those. It's still coming out, but it's pretty much kind of like, it's, it's, it's at its end, yeah. kind of, pretty much anyway. Yeah. 
It'll probably be like the last full year, pretty much this year. I yeah, probably. For it anyway, and I think that is in that's in the top five in their hmm. in their game generation. And I couldn't disagree more. Do you agree that Auto in the top five of the games of this gen? Games of the generation. No, no, yeah. no, no. Couldn't disagree more. So yeah. Yeah, I I agree. Um. I have that just the th first three parts though, and the de the last two parts are just sort of counting down to forty to w forty to one. Okay. Because I think mm -hmm. I I, I didn't l listen to that though, but I think someone posted in the comments that like top five. I I don't know if it actually is right. I think it is. Last of Us and Uncharted Two are in the top five. Mm -hmm. Now, if you could, if you're gonna put two. If you're gonna put a Naughty Dog game, choose one over the other. Don't put two Naughty Dog yeah. games in top five. Yeah, I would not put Uncharted Two in there. I put that in with my most disappointing games of all time list. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far, really? but yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it in the top five. That's for sure. It wouldn't be there. Yeah, I wouldn't put like. If you put one of the put one of them in, not two. Mm -hmm. Like I just still get that. Uh I agree with that. I like their number one though. <laughs> <laughs> the Zelda, probably yeah. a Zelda game. N no, it's, it's not. It's what? What is it? Although I do like the fact that they actually liked Zelda: Twilight Princess more than Skyward Sword. They were when I went when I came up, they said, "Yeah, that's com that's a completely underrated game." And I was like, "Yep, I like these guys. <laughs> they pretty much share the same sentiment as me, because I tried Zelda: tw um, Skyward Sword, played the first three dungeons. I was like, "Yep." I'm done with this game. I'd like to go back though, because I heard it gets better after that though, but man, I just find the world of that game fucking boring to go through. 